Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Bitwig Studio and Music Production. This is Lesson 5.90, and this is our introduction to Instrument Containers video. If you've been following along with this course so far, and you've seen me talk about the various effect containers, then you'll know that our instrument containers probably aren't that special. It's all about how you choose to use them. And I think that their design is just to try to keep things easier for you on a track by track basis. For example, we could always layer multiple instruments on top of each other, no problem. If I want a polysynth here, and then I want to add another polysynth here, I could add an audio track. And on this audio track, I could send both of these to go into audio three. I could turn them both on to record, and then just like that, my audio would be coming out of here, and it would be coming from these two instruments. I could adjust the relative volume levels there, and if I wanted to do any processing on each of these, I could just go into Audio 3 and add in a blur or a compressor or whatever. That's really the exact same thing as me creating the instrument layer. The only difference is that with the instrument layer, we can keep everything onto one track, and it gives me the ability to drop effects in to the instrument layer from this particular container device. All right, the drum machine. The drum machine is something you'll probably be using all the time inside of Bitwig Studio because again, it's one of those very logical, save a lot of space devices. Inside the drum machine, we could drop up to 128 different drum sounds or any sounds or any instruments we wanna use, and then we can trigger those back via MIDI. That's really not that much different from just dropping in a bunch of audio tracks or a bunch of different samplers and then putting our notes out here. This is designed to just make your life a little bit easier, put it all onto one track. And then we also have the more kind of unique XY instrument, which in a lot of ways is no different than what I did here with two, only that instead of two, we have four. And so we can morph between them like so. Uh, I think the strength of these is in really experimentation because in my opinion, you can make great music with or without these instrument containers because you can do pretty much the same things without them. However, where it starts to get interesting is if you had like an XY instrument and then for whatever reason you chose to in each cell drop something like an instrument layer and then inside of the instrument layer you dropped a couple of drum machines and then you repeated that for both cells B C and D, now suddenly we're talking about having just one track with an unlimited amount of timbral variations. And these timbre variations are going to come from the instruments themselves. It's not like what we were doing before with audio effects, right? Because those are just the various effects. Nope, and here we can actually have the uh, sound source being generated from either a Bitwig instrument or a third party instrument. So I could go into this drum machine here and I could drop on, say, a polysynth. Or I could go even more extreme, and I could go into the drum instrument, and I could drop on another instrument layer. And then inside of here, I could stack up, you know, a kick, a hat, an FM4, and I could just make my one sound from there. So obviously, this can get very powerful. It can get out of control relatively quickly. And that's why I see this more as an experimental kind of uh, producer's dream. For someone like me, I think it's a lot of fun to say, okay, let's just take one track and come up with an entire composition. But if you're a producer, you're never really going to want to do that. And instead, you're going to be using these instrument containers for uh, very utilitarian and time-saving purposes. So we'll be focusing on that in the next few videos here. I'm going to be honest. I'm not going to show you too much with these instrument layers or instrument containers, excuse me. And I would think by now you'd have a pretty good idea of how the program is working. And therefore, me even going over some of this stuff is just going to be rather redundant and review. But I will show you maybe a couple of techniques that I can think of off the top of my head. And from there, it will be up to you to really push these in new directions or to have them work into uh, the sort of process that you have when making music. Thank you so much for watching. And you'll hear from me again in the next lesson. Take care.